Motherhood Incorporated proudly presents Military Mom Talk Radio live on toginet.com. Co-hosted by Robin Boyd and Sandra Beck, the owner of Motherhood Incorporated. Military Mom Talk Radio is here with a powerful platform for women to discuss their ideas, issues, and concerns with respect to the military lifestyle. Military Mom Talk Radio encourages you to share your experiences of being a military wife and mother. This show is dedicated to educating your family about the many resources that are available in both the public and private sector. And we'll be sharing helpful information from women all over the world. We'll cover everything military from helping a family member cope with post-traumatic stress disorder to navigating government programs dealing with family issues to the struggles of deployment along with being a working mother both in and out of the home. This is Military Mom Talk Radio, and here are your hosts, Sandra Beck and Robin Boyd. Hi, Military Moms. This is Sandra Beck, and I'm here with Robin Boyd. And, Robin, we've got an unexpectedly full show today. Yes, I love things like that. I just love open houses, you know. Just (laughs) open the door, and we have whoever comes. It's great. That's right. Drop right in. Drop right in. Well, we're going to be visiting with our scheduled uh, guest, uh, Sally, who makes the most beautiful quilts. And I know it sounds so funny, like, oh, my God, you're going to go do quilting on the radio? Well, I've done belly dancing on the radio, so quilting is going to be a breeze um but you know these quilts are really important for our servicemen and women and you know uh, like when i had a premature baby rob the hospital gave me a quilt you know for the baby for max and for zach because mm-hmm. they're both preemies mm-hmm. that were made by you know some women's quilting guild and i still have both of them i've kept both of their little infant baby quilts you know they're like the size of a diaper yeah um But they're beautiful, and I will take them to my grave. You know what I mean? And it's like when I look at these quilts of valor and these valor quilts that they make for our servicemen and women, and, you know, we get to give them a hug through fabric, that's Mm -hmm. pretty cool. It really is, and it's amazing the power of that – that emotion it when somebody holds that we do similar things in our church for example with some prayer beads and um it it has just transcended into the most amazing gift when we give these quilts to people who have um uh, just then been touched by someone's generosity but someone's love and there's nothing more beautiful than something that was handmade and and uh, a gift from the heart like that so i'm so excited to talk to sally in, a, in just a bit about all of the work that she's done it is. It's, well, it's really valuable, um, you know, for two reasons. One, I think it's valuable for the service member, but it's also valuable for the caregiver. Um, you know, one of the things that I felt, you know, and we're going to talk to Linda Creter, a veteran's caregiver, uh, mm-hmm. later on in the show, uh, you know, about what caregivers need. And one of the things that happened to me, and I'm going to tie quilts with caregiving together, is yeah, yeah. when I used to wrap up my kids, you know, they're preemies, so they kind of look like Costco chicken. And, you know, I need to wrap them up to keep them warm, even though it's warm here in Southern California, you know, they had no body fat. Um, But when I would put the wrap this little baby quilt around them, I thought about the women putting this together, or maybe a man, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I thought about the time it took and here they thought about this person that they'll never meet. They'll mm-hmm. wrap up a baby and take care of it. And it helped me not feel so alone. And I know in trying caregiving situations, you know, you cared for your mom. Uh, you know, I cared mm-hmm. for my mom and my dad. And, mm-hmm. you know, there's times when you feel exhausted. And, you know, to have this little quilt made by somebody, I always would imagine, like, who I always imagine this little old lady, you know, sitting there making this little quilt. You know, and who knows? It could have been a 20-year-old. But it yeah. gave me comfort. It gave me peace. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's such a beautiful art and I am I have been involved with textiles for a long time but I've never had a good hand at quilting and I so admire them. We last summer went to um a beautiful exhibit up at the Shelburne Museum up in Vermont uh, near Burlington and the quilt art there was just exquisite and I I'm totally blown away at the craft of and this beautiful art of quilting. And I I would like to pursue it more because I do not have a good hand at it right now. But that's not to say that someday I could, but um, it, it's such a beautiful art. Well, and it's something that, you know, is is 
it's really like made from the heart. It's really yeah. something that's uh, of value far beyond just the fabric stuck together. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, well, we are going to meet Sally Johnson in just a few minutes. And then um, tell us about who we've got later on in the show, Sandra. Ah, we have later on in the show, we're going to visit with veteran caregiver of Wise Health, uh, Linda Creter. And she mm. is very well uh, known in the military communities. And um, she's somebody that's going to talk about how to have a positive quality of life when you're caring for your service member. Because it's a labor of love. We get that. We understand that. It's a necessary thing. We understand that. But we really want you to know if you're a caregiver that you matter too and it's mm. really hard i think rob that um <clears throat> make that demarcation line between your needs and not feeling guilty about them mm-hmm. and then the needs of someone else because mm-hmm. it's i think that's the hardest part of caregiving i think the hours the the monotony the especially when you don't see improvement, you know, when they're chronic issues and chronic care or, you know, they're going to pass away in the end. It's Mm -hmm. one of these things where it's a really unique situation. Normally we have achievement. We solve something. We have achievements because people get better. Well, sometimes people don't get better. They die. They stay the same. And that's mentally a really tough challenge. And it's okay to feel like some days – you want to give up and you can't do this anymore and it sucks and it's awful. But mm-hmm. then you have the associated guilt after it the next day for having your freak out. Um, <laughs> but that's, uh, you know, that's part of what, what it is. I cared for mom close to 20 years and I have to say that I did build in me time, whether it was to go to church an hour every week or whether it was to have somebody here so that I could go shopping. And when we had visiting nurse at that, by the time I had somebody coming in on a weekly basis, I made sure that I did something on my my time, if you will. And, and you do have to have that. And it's, I think it's even worse when it is a family member, because you do have that inner guilt that if I'm not there, oh dear, you know, or what if something happens or, um, you know, you do, and you have to just sort of put that in your schedule and that you're going to, um, that's just part of your week, weekly routine. Yeah, but I think somebody's got to give you permission to do that, especially if you're like me. You know, like you have given me lots of permission over the year, permission to (laughs) take a break, permission not to be so hard on yourself. But there's certain members of our community that find it really hard to take something away from the person they're caregiving for because they need it because Mm -hmm. we have so much and then you feel guilty and you know, you get yourself all tied up in knots. And so I guess what Rob and I are trying to say today, that if you are a caregiver, that it's okay to take a break and it's okay to ask for help. And it feels really weird and creepy when you first do that. Um, but you need to, um, and it's hard to find out what you need when you've spent so much time caring for somebody else because you may not even know what those needs are yeah that's it that's it so i'm looking forward to chatting with linda but you know let's uh first the one thing that i did want to say before we say hi to sally um that came across my desk is that there is going to be a stair climb race in the world trade center i don't know if you saw this sandra um no there is going to be a first, the first annual stair climb race at One World Trade Center. It's going to be in May, um, May 17th. And um, the first 1,000 people who register by May 10th, um, they're going to wear a computerized chip. And whoever has the uh, fastest time will be the winner. Um, there is a $100 entry fee, and there's also a $250 minimum fund raising requirement along with it and the funds the proceeds for this will support service members who've been catastrophically injured in war and will help educate children who have lost a parent now i read this on military times so i would suggest either going to militarytimes.com for more information or um there is a website this sounds just so fascinating i i think it i love things that are kind of innovative and um there is well, 
uh, race up and down? Like, do you race up the stairs? Because, like, coming down, I could just fall down the stairs. And, like, <laughs> Apparently, it's the time up, and it's the letter T, number two, T, towerclimb.nyc. But as I say, uh, go to militarytimes.com, and you'll find more information. From what I gather in the article, San, it is a computer that's going to time you going up. So, so okay. Because I was thinking, like, if you have a bunch of people, like, I really had fat, slow person in front of me, I'd be really mad if I trained for this. So they probably start you at the bottom, and then you yeah. know, kind of give you space in between. Because you think of stairwells, you know, they're not too wide. Uh, no, I know. So this is this is going to be interesting to follow along and, and get the lowdown on on how this all orchestrates. But I thought it was fascinating. So anybody who's really interested and is in that New York area. Uh, planning on being there or intending to go because of this uh look up militarytimes.com for more information i thought it's just cool. be thank yeah be thankful when you take your laundry upstairs that you don't have to go up like 95 flights <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, <clears throat> on the other side of the break, we're going to meet Sally Johnson, and she is a quilter. We met her quite a few years ago, Sam. Remember, she'd be in our chat sure. area because she was always listening to the show that precedes our show, uh, American Patchwork and Quilting, with Pat Sloan. And um, we uh, we became very friendly with her when we realized that she does the most beautiful quilts and has done quite a few of them um, for soldiers in the VA center in her area down in West Yarmouth, Massachusetts. Um, so we're going to meet Sally, and I think we're just um, just about ready to go to break. But we can say a real quick hi to Sally before we go. Hi, Sally. Welcome. Hi. How are you? Good. Good. Is it snowing on the on the Cape? No, we actually can see the grass for once, which is amazing after all these months. <laughs> We have snow today. Honest to God, we have snow today, and there's snow on my porch right now. I don't well, think I this winter. Well, I snow. Will it's happen. just not a lot of it now. It's yeah. thankfully it's starting to melt away, which is amazing because we've had snow piles that are easily eight feet high. Yes, yeah. Uh, the the cities were terrible, and I'm sure down in the Cape, you certainly had your challenge with it. Um, oh, yeah. West Yarmouth, Massachusetts is uh, probably still going to have snow in June, I think. Oh, shh, don't say that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> We've got lots more to chat with Sally Ann Johnson from West Yarmouth, Massachusetts, um, after the break here on Military Mom Talk Radio. Sally, we're delighted to have you. Thank you. Are you a military mom looking for help in dealing with the system? Keeping the home fires burning? Well, that's what we're here for. It's Military Mom Talk Radio with Sandra Beck and Robin Boyd. And we'll be right back after these. want to get a contact high? Tune in for fun, inspiration, and motivation every Friday at noon Eastern Standard Time. Learn how to maximize your mojo and just say no to the status quo. Get inspired and motivated by a fun-loving coach who knows what it's like to get through this thing called life. With your high on life coach, Audra Irwin, each Friday at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time and 12 noon Eastern. wonder who invented the band-aid in 1921 a man by the name of earl dixon was working as a cotton buyer for the johnson and johnson company earl's wife josephine was always cutting her fingers while cooking in the kitchen so one day he took a piece of gauze and attached it to the center of a piece of tape covered it in crinoline to keep it sterile and placed it over her wound his boss, James Johnson, heard about Earl's little invention and decided to start mass producing these band-aids to sell to the public. Johnson & Johnson decided to give Boy Scout troops free band-aids as a publicity stunt, which started the telewagging and the rest is history. What do the British, Irish, Aussies, New Zealanders, and South Africans call band-aids? Plasters. It's marching day. I'm Carolyn Davidson, and Words You Never Heard has been brought to you by the Bariatric Surgery Center of Dallas. We'll put a boot in your ass, it's the American way. Hey, Uncle Sam, put your name at the top of his list, and a statue of a liberty started shaking. 
Welcome back to Military Mom Talk Radio on toginet.com. Covering topics to help on the home front with help from those who know how the system works and how to work the system. It's more fun than a sale at the BX. Now let's get back to it. It's Military Mom Talk Radio. Here again are your hosts, Sandra Beck and Robin Boyd. Hey, Military Moms, this is Sandra Beck, and I'm here with Robin Boyd, and we are visiting with Sally Johnson today, and she does the most beautiful quilts, and um, quilts are such a big part of the, I think, the military recovery process after injury, because all you have to do is type in military quilts. You can go to Google, you can go to Pinterest. I'm in Pinterest right now, because these quilts are just amazing. I want my own quilt of valor, even though I haven't done anything but sit and talk on the air. <laughs> so a big microphone in the middle. But they're gorgeous. They're gorgeous. Sally, I'm so glad that you're here today to talk to us about this. Um, oh, I am so thrilled. I have been doing tons and tons of work with a huge project over a year of research on it, and it's just getting more and more exciting every time I get more into it. Well, so now, how many, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, go ahead, Rob. Okay. No, well, I was going to say, how many quilts have you made specifically for your veterans in that area? Or have you have your quilts gone beyond? Or are you? Yeah, um, they have the been area? actually. I am part of um, a guild that does quilts for the uh, Veterans Hospital up in West Roxbury and uh, Brockton, Massachusetts, and I have you know. Uh, contributed to that, and then I started last year a block drive type of project with a book that I'm planning on writing and getting research for that called Quilts Heal 2 for veterans that um, suffer from PTSD and quilts that for families that have had a loved one that suffer from PTSD or have lost a loved one that suffered from that disorder. Mm. And it has just blossomed and blossomed. And when I went to Houston last year for Quilt Market, I met Northcott Fabrics and Jennifer Brennan, who is a marketing director, and Brian O'Rourke, who is the president of the company, told him what I was doing and how I wanted to go further with the project. And no holds barred, they have donated all the fabric I want for my project. Anything I want, just write to them and they'll send it, which is an enormous amount of fabric, and I've just gotten tremendous response from contributors who want to make blocks, who want to, you know, add blocks to a panel quilt. They have one called uh, Land of the Free, Home of the Brave. It's just absolutely the most gorgeous fabric I've ever, ever seen, and all the coordinating fabrics that go with it is just amazing. Mm. Oh, now this, we want to repeat their name because Northcott, N-O-R-T-H-C-O-T-T, and anybody who has um, done quilting will probably recognize that brand. Um, And they have two lines, don't they? Um, They have um, a line called Stars and Stripes, I think, is it? And then the Land of the Free, isn't it Stonehenge? I do believe there are two different lines, but they're both from Stonehenge. It's um, Okay. I guess that's the name of the the line itself. I see. I see. Um, And they are wonderful. to Now, tell us a little bit about what a a block drive is. For anybody who hasn't participated in this, um, how do they participate and what are they expected to do? When I started the block drive, the main part of the block drive I did started last month. I put it up on my blog. I invited people through um, quilt groups on Facebook or Twitter, let them know that I've designed a block. Mm -hmm. This is the block. This is the size of the block. These are the fabrics that are available. If you want to join in on the fun, this is a block that is going to be integrated into a quilt for a soldier who or a family who has a member who has PTSD. I got an enormous response, 11 people within the first hour. Oh, my wrote gosh. Wrote to me on Facebook. I'd like to join in. They sent me their address. I gave them the instructions on how to make the block. 
I gave them the material, mailed it to their house. They made the blocks. It was a 24-inch block for this first month, and they created the blocks. They sent me four blocks. So when the blocks were done, they sent it back to me. Those blocks are being incorporated with a panel quilt, the panel that North Pat uh-huh. has right now. And for April, the block is designer's choice. As long as it's a 24-inch block, they can make four blocks. They can make 16 blocks, however many blocks they want to make, whatever it is. Uh-huh. With the fabric that I give them, they'll get... a oh four or five yards of fabric because i have so much fabric from north got they were just so generous that oh wow I mail it off to them they have until the end of the month they can create whatever block as long as there's four blocks and it measures the 24 inches if they want to take the 24 inch block and divide it into yep. four separate blocks they don't all have to be the same they can be all uh-huh. different blocks and so it can be incorporated into a quilt that goes with the panel, and so on and so now forth. The, f- the fabric that you uh, send them, are they in set up in fat quarters, or is it by the yard? I have been getting fat quarters. I've been getting um, what they call jelly rolls. They're two-and-a-half-inch strips by the width of the fabric, which is usually 42, 43 inches. I've been getting right. yardage. I've been getting, um, let's see, I got uh, layer cakes, which is like a 10 by 10 package yeah. of um, material. It's it's amazing what they have sent me, just so much beautiful fabric. Now, how many, did, we were just starting to say, how many quilts have you done? If you've been doing quilting since, when did you say, 2005, you've quilt, been quilting? I started, I started quilt, I learned how to quilt when I was a child, and so when I was a child. I started this whole quilting in 2010 when I left my nursing career I left full time nursing to quilt mm-hmm. and, and it's this just is a full time job for you now <laughs> yeah, it's gotten to that yes and I it, it's just it's just blossomed it's just mm-hmm. absolutely blossomed and I just being from you know family members that have been in the military and you know connecting with friends who have their children in the military it's just a passion of mine to be a a supporter of the military when you have given your quilts do you personally go have you sent them do you have a representative from the red cross how do you distribute them with the guild we have sent them over through a representative through the guild when i have sent them i have a liaison that i can connect with and i can i have either brought them to that person or I have mailed them out as they at times need request because they weren't able to meet with me or whatever the case might be. I am with this set of quilts that I'm doing, I want to be able to, especially here in Massachusetts, I want to be able to send them personally. I want to drive there and give them to them. I do know a few people that are out of state across country that I'm not going to be able to do that, but I would, of course, send a nice letter with it and a nice card with it and label on the quilt and all of that and mail it out to the person who is going to receive the quilt. I can only imagine the emotion that ensues when you give this gift. <laughs> this it must does be phenomenal. Get- emotional Mm -hmm. it does get um what's the word there's a lot of feelings and emotion that do happen with it however as time goes on it gets a little easier although you always have that feeling that this person has done so much or this family has done so much for you in this country that you just want to, you just have that, I have that drive, I have to help, I have to help. And I think I've had that for a very long time. And for many, many years, I think I just kind of hid it away. And then when I left my full-time career, mm-hmm. it just kind of popped back out. And I just haven't been able to stop. I have just gone further and further. 
Isn't it interesting, Sally, because as a nurse, you certainly were a caretaker of many. And um, how did it, how did your focus come to our military and our veterans? Most of the focus, I think, and I think the drive for being it being so intense came to me when a friend of mine who I've known pretty much my whole life, I met him when I was nine, when his son was in the Marines and he had passed due to injuries that were caused overseas mm. in Afghanistan. And it just was one of those things that just hit me so hard that I said to myself, I just have to do more and more and more because he had this one son that had such a drive to serve our country. He went over there and he didn't make it home. Mm. And it just absolutely tore me apart. So I just had, I said to myself, I have to give more. I have to do more. I have to do something to make this better. I have to support them Whatever I have to do, I have to do it. And it just has become such intense emotion for me to keep going. I I don't know how to stop. (laughs) <laughs> well, we hope that you don't because all that you are doing is just an inspiration for so many more to join you in, in doing this. Your Quilts Heal 2 project is phenomenal. And again, we want to mention um, a great big thanks to Northcott um, Textiles for their uh, their support of this project. Northcott, N-O-R-T-H-C-O-T-T dot net is where you'll find them. And more information about Sally's project as well as Sally. Um, as the author and and um, teacher is on Sally's quiltingcorner.blogspot.com. And you do have a website now too, Sally? I do. And it's Sally's quiltingcorner.com. That's the easy to remember. <laughs> That's Sally's quiltingcorner.com. We're going to talk a little bit more on the other side of the break, Sally, about uh, you as an author. Uh, you've written some lots of blogs, but you also have a book on the way. So we definitely want to talk to you about that right here on Military Mom Talk Radio. If you've missed any of this show, you can always check us out at militarymomtalkradio.com. And we'll have more with Sally on the other side of the break. Are you a military mom looking for help in dealing with the system? Keeping the home fires burning? Well, that's what we're here for. It's Military Mom Talk Radio with Sandra Beck and Robin Boyd. And we'll be right back after these. If you're ready for a big change in your work, your career, your happiness, your life, it's time for the Million Dollar Mindset with Marla Tabaka. Monday afternoons at 2, 1 central on Toginet.com. Marla believes that with the right mindset, anything is possible. Join us as successful life coach Marla Tabaka inspires you and her clients to explore, discover, and live your dreams by developing what she calls the Million Dollar Mindset. Marla will inspire you to take action on your dreams and reveal secrets to success that will help you realize your own unique power. Tune into the Million Dollar Mindset for heartwarming stories with Marla Tabaka. Learn tips and tricks to building a successful business and unlock the secrets to creating a happier, more balanced life through abundant thinking and attraction power. Hour. For more information on the Million Dollar Mindset, go to our website, MarlaTabaka.com. That's M-A-R-L-A-T-A-B-A-K-A.com. It's the Million Dollar Mindset with Marla Tabaka. Monday afternoons at 2, 1 p.m. Central on Toginet.com. This is the Toginet Radio Network, broadcasting quality programming to the world. LinkedIn, it's a great tool and a great way to do business in today's social media-driven world. And Carol McManus is the LinkedIn lady with the LinkedIn Lady Show, Tuesday and Wednesday afternoons at 4 p.m. Eastern on allbusinessradionetwork.com. The LinkedIn Lady Show is designed to inform, inspire, and educate businesses. Every social media site has a specific demographic, personality, and purpose. And the LinkedIn Lady will interview a variety of guests, such as business owners who can showcase 
showcase their business and talk about how they use social media, such as Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Google+, Pinterest, and, of course, LinkedIn. For more on Carol and the show, check out her website, LinkedInLady.com. As trends change and new applications become available, the LinkedIn Lady Show will bring that information to you in an easy-to-use, fun, and engaging way. Every Tuesday and Wednesday afternoons at 4 p.m. Eastern, it's the LinkedIn Lady Show with Carol McManus on AllBusinessRadioNetwork.com. Welcome back to Military Mom Talk Radio on toginet.com. Covering topics to help on the home front with help from those who know how the system works and how to work the system. It's more fun than a sale at the BX. Now let's get back to it. It's Military Mom Talk Radio. Here again are your hosts, Sandra Beck and Robin Boyd. Hey, Military Moms, this is Sandra Beck, and I'm here with Robin Boyd, and we are visiting with Sally Johnson, and she's talking about the quilts that she's making, and we want to inspire anybody listening today who has a desire to quilt or to sew or to be part of this. Uh, Sally, I want to ask you, how do you get started? I mean, I know, you know, you go to the fabric store, you buy some quilt material, and I don't know, learn how to make a quilt on YouTube. That would be my way. Um <laughs> But how do people who are wanting to quilt or know how to quilt, how do they get involved in stuff like this? How do they make a difference? One of the ways that I started was when I first joined Twitter, I met a lot of people in the quilting community. And there was a gentleman who quilted. He is known as Quilt Dad, um, a.k.a. John Adams. He is a phenomenal phenomenal guy he is um he his real job is marketing and he i asked him how do you go about getting fabric and notions and all that stuff donated he was incredibly generous and gave me the contacts to contact to these fabric companies moda northcott um windham fabric you name it And I just emailed them and let them know that I was either making a quilt for a possible publication or I wanted to make quilts for donation projects to Quilt Bank or to um, our local pantry or military quilts. And they just said, tell me what you need, yardage, however much I needed, and they sent it away. They just send it out. And his word was to me, you'll never know unless you ask. (laughs) It's very true. The amount of fabric that I have gotten is just amazing. I just, Wyndham Fabric sent to me probably, oh goodness, 20 yards of fabric for a quilt that I'm having published in May through American Quilter. Again, Northcott has sent me boxes filled, filled with fabric i mean one of the boxes is so filled it actually arrived on my birthday in december and my son was bringing it downstairs and it started to pop open on the bottom as he was walking down the stairs that's how full it was (laughs) now do you um do a lot of the handwork on it do you machine quilt on top afterwards once you get all these blocks in how do you uh choose to put them together do you do this with the guild I have done some with the Guild. I have done a lot independently. I will take the blocks that I have, and I have a design wall that's in my studio downstairs in my house, and I'll take the blocks and I'll just put them up on the design wall and see what looks good in the placement. And once I have it, you know, laid out, I will just start machine sewing them together, and then I'll just start layering the top the batting and the backing and I will machine quilt on my little Janome that I have mm. and I am very very lucky I'm getting my very first long arm I was um, just going to ask you if you have a long arm <laughs> I'm getting my first long arm end of April beginning of May I was able to come up with the money for it it's just about paid off and it's my favorite color. It's purple. Her name is Miss Violet. <laughs> and it will go much quicker to quilt 
a quilt, especially a lap quilt or a nice large throw quilt for a soldier mm-hmm. on a long arm as opposed on as opposed to a domestic machine where you're moving the fabric mm, instead definitely. of the machine on the you know the machine on the fabric itself there's there's a huge difference even though the technique is almost the same you're mm-hmm. just incorporating it from machine moving to fabric moving what's your best tip um for for storing fabric because I'm sure uh, if anybody uh, is a military family and has to move from place to place, they have had to find the best way to store fabric um, without it either getting uh, moldy or, or mis- musty or uh, do, you, do you store them in bins? How do you store your fabric? I store my fabric downstairs in my studio. I store on a shelf. I'm very lucky I have a very dry basement. It doesn't get too wet or a lot of moisture. For quilts, people that have a lot of quilts that want to store quilts like in their basement if they have no other place to store it, I would suggest the nice plastic um, zipped bags that come with your comforters from like Kmart or Bed Bath and Beyond mm. but wrap them up in tissue paper first it kind of will keep some of the air out and keep things will you know the tissue paper will help keep the moisture away from directly away from the quilt itself mm-hmm. have you ever used those vacuum bags those vacuum seal what are they called space bags I don't I don't know all what they're the called, time but... when yeah. somebody has a lot of fabric and they have a very small space and that's part of one of my lectures I give it's a great resource to have a hanger that has you know the old fashioned hangers where you have the clips where you can hang like five or six skirts yeah if you yeah. store all of your fabric in various little bags those vacuum bags and clip them to that, you can store yardage of fabric on one of those hangers with all the different layers. Wow, what a great tip. It's a great space saver for somebody who has a very small apartment. That sounds fabulous. And and so many times when you end up moving, especially with the military, you never qu- are quite sure where your your uh, accommodations are going to have, what kind of closets, what kind of space. Before we uh, – I, I do want to um, – acknowledge the fact that you do lecture you do have a studio where you give lessons and now you are um beginning uh two books you say and what are what are your topics for your books the first book is called the eclectic quilter it's a combination of all of my designs and a specific technique that i do by weaving tubes of fabric with batting in it to make (gasps) I am in the process of working on my first bed quilt, and it becomes very, very heavy. I did a lap quilt, or you can use it for picnics or whatever. And it's you take the fabric and you're weaving the fabric so it looks like a basket weave. So that is a technique that I um, also teach. And the other part of the book is just basic designs that I have done in an applique technique I created um, to make things look as if things are, um, they call it trapunto or more dimensionalized. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I, just a side note real quick, I trapuntoed a, a Halloween costume for my daughter and my son when they were little, they were Care Bears and I did trapunto all on their little bellies and on their faces. And unfortunately, <laughs> they were a little heavy, but... <laughs> they do get heavy. Yeah, they do. It does when you have to have all that layering. And then the second book, Sally, Let uh, what will that entail? That is Quilt Heel 2, and it is about... Um, Part of the book are um, stories from soldiers or families who have a um, loved one who has PTSD. And the other part of the book will be how we can gain more education to help our military servicemen to cope with and to give them resources in order to help them deal with PTSD. Here on the Cape, it's very difficult. Um, there is a place called Cape and Islands Veterans Outreach Center, and there are 1,300 active cases for various disabilities from veterans, including PTSD. There are resources out there, but I don't think they're 
as widely available, especially here on the Cape. A lot of stuff is available in Boston or Western Mass, where it is quite a hike for people to get to. So some of the resources are out there, but they're not able to get to that resource because they have no car, they have no job or money in order to get up there. One of the things I did was I spoke with uh, State Representative Tim Whelan yesterday, and part of what I learned was that there is there are support groups out there on military bases, but not so much so that it's more available. And I want to compare kind of like an AA meeting, which it's not, but it's a support group where mm-hmm. you would be able to go there and talk about what you're, you know, enduring and experiencing. And I think it needs to be more available in the area, especially on the Cape, because we are so far away from Boston. We're over an hour. It's 100 miles. It should be offered more often, not just once a month or every two months or whatever, there should be something where maybe we can have something at a Salvation Army or a veteran center where we can do something weekly or at a hospital that we can do on a every other week basis so that people can come and maybe people can donate their time in order to, you know, run a group, say, this is a support group, we're here to help you, we're here to give you the resources for whether it be food, clothing, housing, You know, if they don't feel like they can go to these other places or they can't get to them. Mm. Sally, this is really an inspiration. And uh, it's it's amazing what a little effort, how how far that can go. Um, We want to acknowledge that you had earned the Bronze Presidential Service Award for your service during Katrina. You've been involved with Wounded Warrior Project for Fallen Soldiers and Christmas Cards for the Troops. On top of all of the beautiful quilts, over 100 quilts you have made for charity to date. And it is counting. (laughs) So, Sally, we are so appreciative of your time. I want to once again give your website, Sally's quiltingcorner.com you'll want to visit her blog on blogspot the same sally's quilting corner.blogspot.com and sally continued success this is phenomenal and i'm sure in both of those locations we'll find your books as soon as they are published is that correct absolutely thank you so very much we're it looking forward pleasure. to thank you so much <laughs> And we appreciate all you're doing for our military families. On the other side of the break, we're going to meet Linda Creter right here on Military Mom Talk Radio. Are you a military mom looking for help in dealing with the system? Keeping the home fires burning? Well, that's what we're here for. It's Military Mom Talk Radio with Sandra Beck and Robin Boyd. And we'll be right back after these. Listen, something is brewing. The beautiful business evolution is coming. The way we do business is about to change for the better forever. This is real business at its very best. On Beautiful Business Radio, you will learn what it means to truly prosper, how to nourish yourself and your business, how to earn what you deserve and make a difference in the world. The tide is rising. The change is here. Discover a new way to live, love, and partner with yourself and your business on Philippa Rollins Presents Beautiful Business Radio, where you matter and your business thrives every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. Only here on the WooHoo Radio Network. Reaching out from the heartland of the United States with quality programming, this is Tokinet Radio. Have you heard? The pages of American Patchwork and Quilting magazine come to life on our new weekly online radio show, American Patchwork and Quilting. Join Pat Sloan, our blogging and quilt designer host, as she talks about the latest trends, ideas, and inspirations. Her guests include quilt pattern designers, authors, quilt shop owners, and our editors, all quilters just like you. Call in with your questions. 
Get quilting tips from industry experts. Learn about free patterns. Hear behind-the-scenes stories from our magazines, American Patchwork and Quilting, Quilt Sampler, and Quilts and More. Get the scoop on free stuff. And find out more about the best independent quilt shops in North America. To listen to a live show, tune in Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern. Just log on to allpeoplequilt.com slash radio. To hear past shows, go to iTunes and search for American Patchwork and Quilting Radio. We hope you'll join us because we know that quilting changes everything. We'll put a boot in your ass. It's the American way. Help us sound. Put your name at the top of his list. And the Statue of Liberty started shaking. Welcome back to Military Mom Talk Radio on toginet.com. Covering topics to help on the home front with help from those who know how the system works and how to work the system. It's more fun than a sale at the BX. Now let's get back to it. It's Military Mom Talk Radio. Here again are your hosts, Sandra Beck and Robin Boyd. Hey, Military Moms, this is Sandra Beck, and I'm here with Robin Boyd, and we were visiting with Sally Johnson. Rob, you want to give Sally Johnson's uh, quilt information out again? That was really a great segment. It was at Sally's Quilting Corner dot com. Um, Sally is in West Yarmouth, Massachusetts, and um, is a very big contributor to the Cape Island chapter of the American Red Cross. Excellent, excellent. So now we're going to switch gears just a little bit, a little slightly, uh, because we talked earlier in the show, and if you missed the first half of the show, we can be found at MilitaryMomTalkRadio.com. You can find us at our host station owned by Global Broadcasting Networks, TogiNet, that's T-O-G-I-N-E-T. You can check us out on iTunes under Military Mom Talk Radio for over 200 hours of family-friendly, military-based programming. So you're going to want to check that out. But before you do, we want you to listen to Linda Creter because she has got so much information for the caregiver. And the caregiver is the person that's probably not listening to the show because she or she is busy taking care of someone. So <laughs> we're going <laughs> to reach out to you. We will find you. We will hunt you down like dogs because we know that you need care too. Linda, what do you think, you know, when you've got a military service member uh, who's injured, uh, what do you think is one of the hardest things that the caregiver goes through? That's an excellent question, and there's so many varied answers I could give to that. But I think the biggest one is that that it becomes an unexpected crisis because there needs to be education, understanding, where do they get resources, who else do they know that they could help get supportive help from. And it goes to not being alone in this situation. But so many times they feel that they are lost in the chaos and it really does depend the quality of life depends on the caregiver and their ability to roll with whatever comes along so i would say being forgotten um, not feeling alone being supported those are the most important things well, and I think what you talked about, that unexpected part of it, you know, I just want to address, you know, Rob, we talked about this with respect mm -hmm. to military wives, about how people mm -hmm. will say, well, what did you expect? You married a military person. What did you expect? You went, you joined the military. So mm -hmm. there's part of that thing, too, that there's this expectation that we should have expected, you know, to get a leg blown off, or we should have expected mm -hmm. for our husband or wife to be deployed for not 18 months, but 36 months, you know, mm -hmm. and there's an understanding here that I want to lay down, you know, Rob, we talked about this with, with divorce and with dating mm -hmm. military people, but there's some expectation too, I think with veteran caregivers, uh, Linda, I'd love for you to weigh in on that. I think the unexpected nature comes along with, you get that phone call that you completely dread. No, it's not the car driving up to the curb, but it is the next thing. And so you get that phone call and all of a sudden, Every routine is thrown out of whack. But with help and support and a bit of education ahead of time, knowing that you do have resources to call upon, and there are numerous resources that are starting to come into play after 13-odd years of these current eras, but it is very important that they not only reach out and find out how to go through the scheduling and what they need to logistically, but what comes along very, very quickly is that the caregiver's health is often overwhelmed because they have no time for anything but their caregiving. 
and they don't prioritize themselves at all. And there is a reason they tell you to put your own mask on before helping someone else on an airplane. If they don't take care of themselves, they're not going to be able to keep the family unit running. And then all things fall into a state of disarray. It's fascinating when you uh, hear it so factually, but doing it is a whole other thing. And I think... Mm -hmm. The, that realization that your life has changed in an instant because chances are if this is a family member, your life will never be the same, but you need to evolve into, um, and, and we've said this term over and over, a new normal, but it, that, that is intrinsically what has to happen is that you now are going to start all over again. Your relationship is going to be different if it's a, if it's a spouse. Your, um, it's very difficult to care for a parent in a different way because they have always been the caretaker to you. And what kind of support does that caretaker seek out? Uh, from where would, would somebody get this kind of guidance to be able to restructure your whole life? Well, what you're really talking about, it seems to me, Robin, is that the whole communication structure that you're used to doing, who you would reach out to, um, where you would find your information, is suddenly turned on its head because not everyone has gone through the same thing. And even if you're a caregiver for someone um, with PTSD, the next person with PTSD may not be going through the same things that you are. And so it is a matter of taking care of finding out who are your most sympathetic people. Oftentimes the big gap comes in the fact that families truly don't understand. And I speak of that more in the case of the invisible injuries. So the traumatic brain injuries where a person is truly changed, but outwardly most of them look very normal to themselves and their families. Um, they're, the breakdown in communication comes because expectations are changed, but the circumstances have not yet. So where do you go to find answers? There are a lot of um, agency things. DOD and VA obviously offer things. I would also venture to say that the private sector is filling the gaps in terms of the education, uh, giving information that's very practical and usable. And there, there are some things that no one even thinks about. You think about the emotional health of the caregiver, which is essential. There's also some very practical ones. What if you're suddenly lifting a very heavy service member who is bigger than you are? So it's very important you keep your back strength, your upper body strength. You've got to eat right. Caregivers are often in trouble physically because they forget to hydrate. Some of the simplest things that you would think about, but their world revolves around someone else and they are no longer looking out for themselves. So they need to have a circle of support of some sort, whether it's online, uh, in person, a combination of the two. Professional help is often very, very beneficial. But caregiver health is so challenging because unless they are healthy, they can't take care of the rest of the family. And that's very important. Well, and it's funny you say that because, you know, I was reading this thing today about this recipe for a military wife or a military mom, and it's like half cup patience, two tablespoons elbow grease, one <laughs> tablespoon courage, like a right. cup of tolerance, and then a dash <laughs> of adventure. And, you know, what I would say to, and, and is, is the absolute ability to rebound from the unexpected because right. so much of this is, it's on the fly. We don't, we're not prepared, you know, to all of a sudden, become the caregiver in this scenario we're expected to caregive to our child to our family okay. to our house okay. to our things but you know i remember the first time i had to give an injection i was like oh man like i'm not a doctor don't you have to go to medical school to do this <laughs> but you know you do it and how, what are some resources for caregivers that are out there that um, you know, can, can people can turn to choose from because you're so tired and you're so exhausted. Now the prospect of going, well, how do I even find help can feel overwhelming. A great question. And it really depends on which modality someone really has the time for and how they like to be reached. We find that sometimes 
The hardest part is getting someone to take their head and lift it up enough to realize that they do need help and resources. So there are online resources. Obviously, I run VeteranCaregiver.com, which has resources, but the VA has resources. There are wonderful blogs run by military spouses who are wounded warrior wives. There is a large cohort of parental caregivers for their adult military children. A new book was just published recently called The Mighty Moms of Walter Reed and Their Wounded Warriors. Fantastic perspective on the parent caregiving. So you can go online. You can go in person. There are support groups. There are um, phone conferences. I know that uh, NICO and uh, Department of Veterans and uh, Vet, uh, Defense and Veterans Brain Injury Center, for example, has teleconferences and webinars. Unfortunately, you really have to seek them out yourself. There is nothing that's proactively going out to the caregiver, and they have so little time. And so it really does involve an Internet search locally, optimally, so they can sight, see and meet other people. I do want to insert, though, that while being around peers is very helpful, Remember that you're often affected by those around you. And so if you are surrounding yourself with those who are in the same phase that you are, which is overwhelmed or tired, um, exhausted, I should say, uh, needing respite, etc., you need to find a variety of people in different phases of the caregiving journey so that some people are up, some people are down, and you have a lot of variation in order to keep up that positive mental outlook, because that's the most difficult part. If you can view things through a brighter lens, and I'm not talking Pollyanna here, mm -hmm. but I am saying take a look at this as post-traumatic growth, if you will, and try and surround yourself with people who can offer you sustenance, and then you help others that are earlier in the journey. So it's very much a supportive network out there, and it doesn't take much in the way of searching to find groups, even in your own neighborhood. Also, your faith-based communities often have caregiver support groups, and I encourage everyone to take advantage of any uh, medium that works for them. And you will find that there are more and more groups that are offering things that are available 24-7 online because the caregiver's schedule is so erratic. And that was one on. of the yeah, that's one of the things that helped me. So uh, although I wasn't a veteran, it's caring for my mom. I would mm -hmm. be at 2 o'clock in the morning because right. I had been up with her. So Linda Creator, thank you so very much. And I do want to suggest everybody visit VeteranCaregiver.com for lots of information and resources and to be able to connect with Linda. Uh, thanks for taking the time to be with us. We sure do appreciate it. It was my pleasure. Thank you for having me. And do remember to visit sallysquiltingcorner.com if you would like to learn a little bit more about quilting and how you can be a part of uh, a quilting block drive. That's a great way to add a little love to someone's life. Thank you so very much for joining us. We'll see you all again next week, I hope. For Sandra Beck, this is Robin Boyd on Military Mom Talk Radio. <laughs>